propeller system is placed percutaneously through the femoral artery using a monorail technique and a standard pigtail. It is advanced across the aortic valve and into the left ventricle. Impella pulls blood from the left ventricle and expels it into the aorta, actively unloading the left ventricle. This active unloading of the left ventricle increases end organ perfusion and protects the kidneys from acute injury. Impella is the only percutaneous heart pump providing hemodynamic support to enable heart recovery. Impella is indicated for protected PCI and cardiogenic shock in the setting of AMI and postcardiotomy. Impella provides hemodynamic stability during angioplasty and stent placement by maintaining mean arterial pressure. By providing hemodynamic stability, Impella may allow for more complete revascularization in a single session, which has been shown to decrease the rate of major adverse cardiac and cerebrovascular events. A randomized controlled trial and additional studies have demonstrated a reduction in peri- and post-procedural adverse events. Impella promotes myocardial recovery by stabilizing hemodynamics, unloading the left ventricle, and perfusing the coronaries and end organs. Hello, my name is Joe Kajewski. I'm one of the advanced Impella trainers with Abiumed. And today we're going to take a deeper dive looking into our AIC, or the Automated Impeller Controller, to make sure that you understand everything that you're seeing on our placement screen. So this simulator is going to simulate what that Automated Impeller Controller reflects while we have a patient on Impella support. So we're going to start by looking at the soft buttons. The soft buttons from the top to the bottom. The first button is our mute alarm button. This is going to be to silence any alarms that you may have. It is important to understand that there are three different colors of alarms and those are in order of importance of red, yellow, and white. So the red alarm means that the pump is not functioning to support the patient. So this is going to be like your pump position wrong alarms. Your yellow alarm is going to mean that the pump is functioning, just not adequately supporting the patient. So this is going to be more like a suction alarm. You're still getting flow, it's just not at that ideal spot that you would have at that given P level. And then the white alarms are gonna be more your FYI alarms. So this is usually if they're doing something in the background with the purge solution, it might give you a message just saying, hey, I did this. So more just of an informational alarm. The next button down is our flow control button. It does exactly what it says. Anytime you want to control the amount of flow that we're giving that patient, you're gonna go into the flow control button. We run the device at different P levels. As you adjust those P levels, that will be reflected in the lower corner where you'll see that flow adjustment. Display is going to be anytime you wanna change what you're looking at on the screen. 99% of the time you will have it on the placement screen, which is gonna give us our placement signal and our motor current. But you could also use this display button if you wanted to look at your infusion history or if you wanted to show family the picture of where the impella sits within the heart. Next, we're gonna to go to the purge system button. So as you know, the impella controller has an integrated IV pump that has D5 with 50 units per ml of heparin running through it. This protects our motor. There are going to be times when you're going to need to take an action on that purge solution. You may need to change the bag. You may need to change the cassette. Anytime you want to go in and take an action on that purge, you're going to go into purge system. And then the last button is our menu button. Now this button you might not use as often, but it is going to allow you to look at maybe the alarm history. That would be one reason to go into that menu button. When we look at the bottom of our screen here, you will see that over at the far left hand corner, it's going to give the additional amount of flow that we're giving the patient. Again, controlled by that flow control button or the P level that you're on. You'll notice that the larger number here is giving the average amount of flow at that given P level. So max flows 3.8, min flows are going to be three. So even though this is a continuous flow device, we still have the native heart working as well. So we will have a max flow and a min flow during the cardiac cycle. This is just the average amount of additional flow the impella is giving. Our middle 
of our screen here is going to look at what's happening with that integrated IV pump. So this is going to tell us that purge flow or the rate that that purge solution is going, as well as the purge pressure that's behind that purge flow. And then you'll see that on the far right hand of that common screen, we will have the additional metrics. So that's going to be inputting the cardiac output, and then the AIC will automatically calculate the CPO to allow for trending of that CPO. As we look at the waveforms that we see on the placement screen, you'll notice that we have a green waveform, which is our motor current. The motor current is going to help with identifying positioning of our device. So what is motor current? Motor current is essentially looking at the amount of energy and flow through the cannula. So when the valve is open, I have more energy, more flow, which will be reflective of the peak on our motor current. When the valve is closed, I'll have a higher gradient, which will be less energy, less flow. So it'll be reflective of the valley on our motor current. So when the device is in the correct position, we will have a nice pulsatile motor current. When the device is malpositioned or maybe drifts in or out, then it would be reflective of a flat motor current because the aortic valve is no longer creating that pressure gradient across the cannula. You'll also notice that we have a red waveform or our placement signal waveform. So this is going to give us two different waveforms. It's going to give us the AO waveform and it's going to give us an LV waveform. Now the AO waveform is simply from that optical sensor. The optical sensor is located where the cannula and the outflow meet. So wherever that sensor is, is the waveform that we will get from the red waveform. The LV waveform is going to be essentially the L waveform derived from using that optical sensor and the motor current. So this is going to be an estimated LV waveform. So this was a brief overview of the automated impeller controller to help you better understand the waveforms that you're looking at and to be able to better navigate the controller when you have a patient on support.